thumbnails for this. And we are live! Oh my god, it's Friday, and I'm Ivana. And I'm Ayla. And we are Girls in Goal, and what are we doing here on a Friday? Um, actually, we're here to introduce to you our newest Girl in Goal, Haley! Hi! Um, okay, so what we're doing here on a Friday, to answer my own question, um, we are going to start a segment called Foreign Fridays. Um, it's not going to be every Friday, but um, whenever you know, it happens, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And just to clarify, it's all foreign, so everything international. We're going to try and stay away from USMNT and MLS because that's not the point. Right. So, um, Haley is a little bit more well-versed in um, the foreign leagues and foreign happenings. She's our international correspondent, guys. It's fine. So, um... Hey Haley! Hi! Um, <laughs> walk, walk us through what we're gonna do here. Um, well, Introduce yourself. My name is Haley. Tell us about yourself first before we get started. Um, Alright, there's not really much. Uh, <laughs> my name's Haley. I'm 18 and I'm still in high school. And uh, I used to play soccer, but I don't currently anymore just because injury and busy with school and whatnot. Um, but I love watching soccer, especially foreign. I do watch MLS. I love MLS, but I get a little too rambunctious at the topic, so I just like to stick to just for right now. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so um, in our regular podcast, we kind of like to stay at home and work our way out. So we're going to kind of do the same thing. Um, we're going to start talking about the man of the hour, I guess. Yes. Um, Mr. Dempsey. Mr. Dempsey is like getting the, quite a bit of a man of quite the year right now. I guess, actually. yeah. I mean, man, like man of like all of the hours of the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, we vaguely talked about the Dempsey transfer ridiculousness, but we're gonna like actually talk about it because it's, it's kind for of a big, Friday and it's a big deal. Yeah. So, um, everybody knows Clint Dempsey is at Fulham right now, and he is doing amazing things. Yeah. Just Twenty-two in all competitions. That's ridiculous. Um, he's currently being pursued though, because as his contract is up in the summer, he's currently being pursued by um, Arsenal, Manchester United, and uh, Spurs. So, and I think there's been a little bit of talk about Chelsea if they finish high enough in the table. Um. I just think he can't afford to go to a club that won't use him right away. I, he's Especially too... Especially Manchester yeah. United. Especially Manchester... I, I do think that if he goes to Manchester United, it could kill that career. It could kill what he's been doing. Just because his position is Wayne Rooney's position. And with Wayne Rooney and the people lined up behind Wayne Rooney, he's never going to get any playing time. Absolutely. And it's going to mitigate all the success and all the amazing things that he's done. Because we're not going to get to see him do it anymore. And we don't want that because we love Clint and we want him, you know, you want his successes to translate into more playing time for the national team also. Yes, because if he, if he didn't meet playing time at Manchester United, it could also... English, oh. really? <laughs> I don't know. Speaking. Um, it could also majorly injure his chances um, of really putting forth the same amount of... I don't remember what I was going to try to say. <laughs> Um, with the national team. Um, yeah, because Klinsman does... Um, he looks at your club play. Yeah, he looks he at your said club that. Play. Yeah, he said that. So it's, you know, I mean, obviously we're concerned with his foreign play, but we also, we would be lying if we said we weren't concerned at all with his, interna with his like, national team. How time. that translates to him being on the national team. And this is kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal that, you know, as far as I can remember, I haven't seen a race like this and talk like this about an American. Absolutely. In a long time. So it's kind of a big deal. And it could be, it would be great if he could go to a club like Manchester United and find the playing time because it would create a whole new profile and perspective toward American players. But right now, I think his best chances are to stick with Fulham, at least for another a, season, if he can yeah. get a, a year extension. And I do think that if he can duplicate what he's been doing this season... Or make it even better. Next season... I don't know how he can make it better, but... <laughs> that it's gonna 
it, it's kind of going to prove to these clubs that it's not just a fluke. It's not just he got lucky. It's none of that. It's this guy is a goal scorer, and you're, well, you want him, and you want him on the pitch. And so I think that his offers could double, if not triple, you know, based on that. And I, as far as teams going after him, I really don't know that he'd be a good fit. I mean, maybe with the Spurs, maybe with Chelsea. Definitely, I don't think he would get enough time with Arsenal or Man U. Yeah, I mean, he has you know, he has some stiff competition at both of those clubs, and he'll have competition anywhere that he goes. But um, but I think you know the the situation has to be right. Like moving on to a bigger club and you know somewhere else can be good. It's just the situation has to be right in terms of. I mean, obviously for him, he has to think about the money because he does have a family and he has to put food on the table, whatever. But um, he also has to think about his own professional playing career and how he needs to think about the longevity. Yeah, I was going to say that also, you know, despite the fact that, yeah, they're going to offer him a lot of money, I think that if he can prove that he's a consistent goal scorer, that it'll help his longevity because he'll get first team status on one of these, you know, top four teams and they'll keep him. Right. And that'll in the long run, put more food on his table. Even I mean, he, he can fish, so I have no doubt that, I have no doubt that he can put food on the table. You know, it, this just makes it easier. Yeah, it's easier, it's fine. Maybe it's he can nice get a fancy a little, fishing pole. You you have to have money to avoid to afford the salt for the fish. This is true. So he, yeah, he's got to have something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, I mean, this is going to be interesting to watch play out, um, and we hope Clint does what's best for Clint. Mm -hmm. And stepping outside of England, <laughs> we have um, one of the bigger debates right now is the upcoming Champions League semifinals, which come up on the 18th? Soon. 18th. They come up soon, yes. <laughs> they come up, uh, I do believe it's the 18th. If I'm wrong... I apologize. Yeah, but um, very soon. Yeah, but do y'all have any predictions for hopefully the final or? I have a feeling it's gonna be another classico. To be quite oh, honest with please, you, no. please God, no, no more friggin' classico. I, I mean, I of course I'm a huge Barcelona fan. They're my team. Um, I'd love to see them play as always, but not against Real Madrid. I'm over it. I'm over it. I, well, here's Come the thing. On. Here's the thing. I think it, it's another, it'll be another, I think it'll be another Clasico, but I can very well see by, uh, Bayern upsetting Madrid and, you know, making yeah, it Yeah, I'd love to see it, a Barcelona-Bayern final. I see, would. See, Haley was saying that before, before we started, and I was like, yeah, that's good, because all I knew was that I just want Barcelona, but yeah, <laughs> If I'm looking at Barcelona Real, Barcelona Bayern, not Barcelona Real. <laughs> no. I, I mean, Bayern has been consistently upping it throughout the entire trek through the Champions League this year. And I think that if it were to come down between Barcelona and Bayern, it could definitely be quite a show on the pitch when you have, like, Gomez and Lom back there in defense against some of the greats in Barcelona. I think it would just be... Fantastic, and it would be something that hasn't really because you see classicos all the time now. Right, it used to be like special, like how twice we talked about like twice a mm -hmm. year. It used to be really special, people would get really into it. They still get really into it, but you know, if you miss one classico now, you've got one seven weeks later. Yeah, it's not really that big of a deal anymore, which is kind of a shame. And I wish that it would kind of get dialed back so we wouldn't have as many because then it would be fun again, right? Right, um. No, but okay, but the consensus is that Chelsea's not making this final. No, right? Chelsea's yeah, not. No, no, no. I even have a couple of Chelsea friends that were like, wow, Chelsea's gonna get to play Barcelona. I'm like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen, guys. No. no. And if it does, smite us. So, but, I mean, yeah, I will. I. That. You know, you can call me out if Chelsea makes this final. Okay, Messi will have to be injured. Um, <laughs> all can... of all of Barcelona's back line will be out for something or other. Yeah. Valdez, Valdez is just Valdez gone. Is gone. He's yeah, just, we he's don't know not where there. He all of all of the goalkeepers yeah. are injured. <laughs> they have to pull like a Mike McGee and like put like I don't know, like Messi in goal. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> 
Uh, but okay, so consensus uh, is it's between the like it's the gonna be biggest, the biggest is tr figuring out who Barcelona is gonna be playing. Yes, out of the because it's gonna come down to Barcelona, and then out of the three, I do think that Barcelona and Bayern are the two prime, but Real Madrid still does stand a chance. Yeah, because you a know chance. they're always gonna be one of those teams, <laughs> one of those teams of the chance, like. But. You're never, ever, ever going to be able to be like, oh, yeah, they're going to beat them. Like, we have a lot of that in the MLS and stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah, they're clearly going to beat them. <laughs> you don't have that when you're names. playing yeah, Real Madrid. You don't have that. That's something they could always... Yeah, because they do a lot of back and forth. And they ha there have been upsets, especially here recently. Well, and I think that Madrid is much, like... As much as it pains me to say this because that is how much I love Barcelona, their back line is really good. That's one of, despite them having Ronaldo in there, you know, all of that up front, okay, it's flashy, it works, okay. I think that something overlooked about that team is the back line. I think that's really good, and I don't think people talk about it very often. I'm going to just take any praise that Real Madrid gets because I am the lone Real Madrid fan in this panel right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think Barcelona's backline is better, but I think that that's that something that comment. gets overlooked. Yeah, I think that's something but that you gets try. overlooked. But you try, you try. Yeah. I think that was me. I try to be nice, you know, but when it comes down to it, Barcelona's just better. Currently, Barcelona are definitely the headliners. I mean, if you look over their past years, it, it's been absolutely incredible. It's just record-setting throughout the world. and. I don't think you can even try to compete with it right now. If I was a club, I would not want to be in this same in this situation. In this situation of playing <laughs> Barcelona, they'd win like seventeen negative five. Yeah, I mean, even if, <laughs> even if it does, I'd make it possible. But my my team, <laughs> yep. Even if it the does first. come down to a Clasico, I think either way, it's gonna be a good game. I think it'd be more exciting if it's not a Clasico. I do think it would be more exciting if it wasn't a Classico. Because then, if it's a Classico, it's starting to feel a little bit informal, all the Classicos. Yeah. So it would kind of take down the excitement a little bit of it being Champions League. And I'm sure it would kind of almost be forgotten about as. Yeah, the because League you do get the Classicos within La Liga. So. Yeah, I think it'll to, isolate a lot of just the Champions League fans because you want to see, you know, different. The point of. The Champions League is different clubs from different countries, yeah, different coming, leagues, you know, yeah. competing against each other. So, you know, it's. I don't want to see another Clasico. I think it will be another Clasico, but we will see. Pray, we'll see. Pray not. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so, moving on though, um, I guess we'll talk about the Euro preview that mm -hmm. we're. Yeah. Yay. So Euros are coming up, which is pretty exciting um, for all of us, you know, World Cup um, starved human beings. <laughs> yeah, it's been too long, it's been too long. I always love national team action. I love national team action, but, you know, it's the World Cup is the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. Soon, um, soon. Brazil's coming up, I guess. <laughs> It can't come soon enough. Yeah, two more there years. Are, two more years. Hey, the outlaws are already booking like yeah, they are. And mm -hmm. tickets and yep. I think they only have like yeah. And by the way, speaking six, of the World 20, Cup, five, five, um, if you something. are from America and you want to go to the World Cup, you need to start looking into getting your visa now because Brazil. It takes a really long time to get your visa because we kind of jerk them around a little bit in that aspect. So they do the same thing to us. So if you're planning on going. Go figure out the stuff about your visa because yeah, your international travel, whatever. Brazil will you don't just get a tourist visa like you do everywhere else in the world. You have to have like some special something or other visa. So Research just to it. know, just Research to know, it. we want you guys to go to the World Cup if you want to go to the World Cup. Um, okay, so, so Euros. Euros. <laughs> the, the groups are kind of uh, separated. Some are balanced. Some are you know who's gonna make it out of each group. Not, I mean, not all of them, of. but just a couple of them. Yeah. In group A, I apologize to all of the <laughs> Everybody in group, in group A. group A, but... Um, uh, yeah, I just kind of... That one's kind of like a dice That's roll. the A. Like, it's that's the A. A. <laughs> uh, it's group A. Group A. <laughs> uh, for group A, I picked Russia and Poland. Just... Because those were the two I said that Greece I said Russia. Greece. I said Greece and Russia. Um, I think Russia... Uh, who was your second team, Haley? 
Uh, Russia. Russia. I think yeah. Russia is the consensus Pretty here. Pretty unanimous. Um, but I want to see Greece. Um, they're having kind of some, you know, internal country issues. I but, think it'd be yeah. good for Greece. But I, I think it'd be yeah, good. Yeah, it'd be nice you know. for them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. Eh. But, okay, that's group A. <laughs> but I understand that you're eh. Yeah. Group B is probably the biggest of the groups. Yeah, I think. Is group B for last? Oh, we'll discuss yeah. group B last. Last. So okay. we'll skip to group C. Um... I th out of Group C, even though I th I'll get to it later, but I think Spain is gonna let everybody down in the Euro. Everybody who's going for them, so I'm sorry about that. But in Group C, I pick Spain and Italy. Although I think that Ireland might be able to like come up and surprise because I actually went back and watched a couple of their more recent games, and that's surprising to me how well they did. So Ireland might come up, but I'm really going with Spain and Italy. I'd like to see Spain and Italy, but I think Italy is definitely going to take a hit with Rossi being out now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of his re-injury. So if you haven't heard, um, Giuseppe Rossi, how, how do you say his name? Um, Foreign names. Um, Giuseppe Rossi, um, Giuseppe? I, I don't stick, remember. my rule is stick with last names unless it's Germany. In that case, you definitely want to go for the first name. <laughs> the first name so. What do you call Schweiz? I was sitting there for like, and nobody knew what I was talking about. I was like, Schweiz, Schweiz, Schweiz. And then I finally got it. Yeah, but I was like, Bastion. That guy. There we go. That guy. Anyways, so, yeah, I think. Oh, Giuseppe oh. Rossi is injured. Yes. So he re-injured his Previously re uh, injured it in October. And he's re and then, he's retweaked it. Yes. So in, good going. Uh, training. Sorry. And now he has to have surgery. So. And they so say he'll be out until about October. That could hurt Italy, which is another reason why I think Ireland might come up and just kind of shock everybody. If they do good for them. But go yeah. with Spain and Italy. Yeah, I got Spain and Italy in, the, in Group C as well. Haley? Spain and Italy. Pretty I sound like yeah. I'm like dog. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I think Group C is pretty easy. Germany's gonna win it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Group D. Moving on. You've got it's it's England, France, Sweden, and the Ukraine. So we I think pretty easily narrow it down to three. Um. <laughs> sorry, Ukraine. Sorry, guys. From there, I mean. None of these teams are really exciting for me. All England. Of these teams, this is another eh. Uh, eh. I would like to see. I would like to. You know, I'd like to see England. England and France. I've got England yeah, and France. Yeah, I've got well. England and France. Um, I think Sweden, just because France had all those kind of like internal just issues, fighting amongst yeah. themselves issues, and then England has been like we were talking about before the podcast. England didn't like slowly decline. England was like. Peace later. <laughs> we're done with this. Like England just like jumped out of England. England's, well. England's yeah. been a bit of a joke to itself now. Yeah. Actually, they make a lot of the propaganda is just England kind of just crazy. stopped playing well, which is why I think that Sweden might be able to sneak in. I would, sneak in. I would like to see England and come up a little bit though. Yeah, I would like to see England kind of get their get their feedback. Because I mean, it own. is England, and we know that they definitely have the possibilities. And that they they have the players to do it, but can they do it? Although the best thing about their like decline and just utter shocking play during the World Cup was all the pictures of angry angry David Beckham. Those are my favorite. <laughs> He's so angry. He's it was the best, that's the best part. So, I mean, it, on one hand, I really like making fun of England, and I really like all of the funny stuff that comes out of England losing. But at the same time, like, okay, come on, guys. Get, get, it's get, starting to get, get, get back together. Now. Get it back starting together. Starting to get old now. Let's go. No, I think, I think it's so fun to make fun of them, though, because it's, it doesn't happen often, like, before the now. decline. Yeah. You know, it didn't happen often because they were so dominant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you... You kind of have to kind of be like, oh, okay, England, you're on, you know, on a pedestal right there. But then after, then this World yeah. Cup came around and it was like, yeah, so now everyone's huh? like, huh? I think they still have that respect factor there, like, because they do history. have the history. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course. But, but I think that they really need to stop riding fully on that history and actually make some moves again. Yeah, I, I'd like to see them come up and kind of make make a go for it. Yeah. yeah. I want this generation to make a name for themselves a little bit. You yeah, know? and they, they do. That is they important to think about with that England talent. national yeah, team. Really exciting. They have talent. a lot of young talent. They're, they don't have a kind of like tried and true. Right. 
set team anymore. Right. So that that's probably a part of and it. And like we said, you can have all of the talent. We've said this in previous podcasts. You can have all of the talent in the world on your roster, but if you can't figure out how to piece them all together, your team is not going to be, you know, a team that anybody thinks anything of because you're not going to be winning any games. Yeah. So. so now we get to go up to Group B. Uh, group B. <laughs> group B is the big one. Um, it's Netherlands, Germany, Portugal, and um, <laughs> another team, which is a team that we're pulling it out on the here. Uh, we. Um, uh, it's 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 de- no. No, that's Champions League. No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Is, isn't it Denmark? Is it Denmark? Is it's it Denmark. De- it's Denmark. It's, it's Denmark. Denmark. It has to be Denmark. It's Denmark. Yep, um, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That, Denmark drew the un- most unlucky group or, ever. They should have gone to maybe group E. Group <laughs> E. Um, One of the group E. There's two group S. They could have gone to group E or group D. D. <laughs> but, um... You know... Uh, you know... If you had put... If you had put France in Group B, I would have gotten. That would have been. Yeah. Then you would have had two official Group A's, and then like ah yeah. Group B. Yeah. Um. But no. Yeah. I definitely think out of Group B, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think it's gonna be Netherlands and Germany. I don't think Portugal's gonna. I mean, despite Ronaldo. Yeah. But if, but if there is going to be, I think Germany for sure is gonna make it out of Group B. It the. The second spot is what's going to be the toss-up. Yeah, this is like the Champions League all over again. Like, this one, it's definitely going to be Germany. So, now it comes down to Netherlands or Portugal. So, it depends on who, you know, finds their feet fastest, I think, for I do th- I, I, for that. I go with Ayla. I do think it'll come down to, like, I think the two front runners from Group B are Germany and Netherlands. Despite the size of Group B and the possibilities presented by Group B, I think it'll definitely, the two to watch will be Netherlands and Germany. And that'll think, be really exciting. Yeah, I yeah. think for it, me... It'll feel kind of like World Cup again once yeah, you get exactly. Spain in exactly. there from Spain, Group C. Yeah, mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, and Germany and the Netherlands. Who's yeah. going to show yeah. who up? And I mean, I think that if you look at Portugal as a team and you look at the Netherlands as a team, the Netherlands are a little bit more... They have more of like aggressive playing style, mm-hmm. I think. And I think that could come in handy when it comes down to them playing Portugal. Who's going to knock who out? Just within the group, who's going to actually finish? I think the Netherlands are going to. So do we have any final predictions already? Just going to jump the gun there a little bit. I mean, I think Germany's going to take it. I think Germany's going to take it, and I think the final's probably going to come down to Spain and Germany. That's that's what I find. I'm going to go ahead and call that, but that's my final, and I think Spain will take it. Not Spain. Germany will take it. (laughs) Yeah, I I think Germany's going to take it. I, yeah, I definitely think Germany is going to take it. Spain is hard for me to say they're going to make it, which is really hard because I love the Spanish national team. But who love, else love, do love you them. see coming up? See, it's hard. I mean, I would like to see maybe Russia Ukraine. or England. Ukraine's going to just... Ukraine! Yeah, Ukraine! <laughs> they're going to... The Czech Republic. Oh, no. I, the Czech Republic has... Um, a really hot player that I can't think of the name of. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, no, I mean, I think Russia and England could definitely be, like, sleeper cells. Like, they could just come out and be like, whoa, hey, These what's up? These past few years have been total, just, yeah. they're just playing the game the entire time. They're gonna just come up. Yeah, I, I think that they could potentially be sleeper cells, but I think Spain has been on such a steady decline since the World Cup that it's hard for me to be excited about them. That's why why when they came over here and they beat us, and not only did they beat us, but they beat us with Torres, that I was just kind of like... I know. Oh. That's like... mm. Like, they're very prestigious, and they did win the World Cup, and and they they have all those players. They're... They have a fantastic... They look fantastic on paper, and they work together tactically very well. But since the World Cup, we haven't seen the results from them that we would expect from a World, a Cup, World, World Cup, Cup team. team. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's all the classicos. They're fighting it's amongst each Cup. other. I'm just kidding. That's but not yeah, right. <laughs> but it's not just a World Cup it. team. It's a World Cup champion team. Yeah. Which they is are why the it's so, it's so and, mind-boggling. And they actually say, because of the classicos, that 
there's it feels like there's becoming a lot more pressure between the players that are on Real Madrid yeah, and Barcelona I, and I that feel it's causing like, when they get together it's causing a bit of tension like didn't Xavi and Ramos and and Ramos and um PK yeah yeah they could because so just like Spanish background um just politically Madrid and Barcelona are politically divided as well and so in Barcelona, they speak Catalan, Catalan, I, Catalan yeah. yeah, which is a different language. And apparently, during a press conference, somebody asked Gerard Pique, and Gerard Pique actually, I believe, is like loosely related to the Catalan monarchy. <laughs> I'll have to look that up, but I think that's actually legit. I think I read that. Asked him to say it to, you know, say his response in Catalan and not in Spanish and Ramos got really upset about it and later they were like no haha we were joking but apparently it's like a real fight and so I don't know what's going on with that apparently there's a lot of like there's a lot of drama team yeah. in, in a team and when you get the drama inside a team off the pitch it's still gonna be seen on the pitch yeah because that's you can't cover up stuff makeup sweats off yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, locker room tensions will translate onto the pitch. I mean, that's why it's so it was so important for us to get, you know, Brian Ching back over here because we wanted his locker room presence. So, um... Good to have him. Yes. So, I mean, uh, we're jumping to MLS <laughs> a little bit here, but, you know... It's the same it's the concept. concept. It's the, it's like, the same yeah. concept. Yeah, so, I mean... Unless there's something that really brings the Spanish locker room back together, I don't, I mean, I, I totally see your point as Spain is probably going to disappoint in Euro. Yeah, and I mean, I really do think that it has to do just within the locker room, honestly, because you look at the team and the majority of them either play for Madrid or play for Barcelona. Yeah. And then you have a few here and there that play for, you know... In, other teams, like, you know, like in the yeah, Premier League. And then a few that play, like, in scattered teams in La Liga. Right. But for the most part, you know, there's a couple that are on, like... Yeah, anyways. For the most part, they're... It must be awkward for Barcelona them, Barcelona Madrid, yeah. It must be awkward for the, play the players that don't that play don't for play. Madrid or Barcelona. Because mm -hmm. then it's like, do we have to pick sides? Yeah. Like, Why are you guys fighting? Ridiculous. Calm down. So, yeah. uh, calm down. So, and Mata. Mata plays for Chelsea, Chelsea. Um, as does Fernando Torres. Reina plays for Liverpool. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see if, you It'd know... It would be if, awkward to go back into that situation. Yeah. 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 I, I think so, too. And I think that it really does come down to the locker room for them. And a big part of that probably has to do with all the Classicos they keep happening. Like, they keep having to fight with each other, and it gets so intense. And, like, didn't somebody punch somebody during one of the Classicos recently? I like I feel all, like they all kind of run together for me at this point. <laughs> yeah, they all run together, but I feel like Ramos, wait, wait, Sergio Ramos punch before the punch before at that other game where there was a Yeah, man exactly. Punch. <laughs> yeah. Like they need to calm down with all these classicos. I feel like if they didn't have to play each other as often, they Well, I mean, sometimes they can't they can't like avoid it because they have so many like they have um the Copa del Rey where like it's like yeah. it's kind of like a mini like La Liga within itself and it's it's kind of you know it, it's redundant. It's insane. Classicos pay. Yeah, classicos yeah. pay a lot. Like, like yeah. They get a lot of, you know, global coverage and here in America yeah. I know that more Americans are apt to turn on when it's Real and Barcelona, Barcelona than when it's like anybody else and pretty yeah. much anybody else. Anybody else. That game is very much a worshipped factor in international right. soccer watchers in America. But yeah. so I mean the moral of the story, I think Spain's gonna disappoint, but I think that Germany is gonna take it all. It's just what I think. Yeah. Not so. an upset, it's determined. Yeah. It is written. <laughs> it is law. <laughs> because we've decided that Germany's going to win, yeah. they're going to win. We decided uh, the end. <laughs> or the Ukraine. Yeah, or, or the, the Ukraine. Ukraine. Or the Ukraine. I could I could I could be a Ukraine <laughs> fan. Yeah. Come on. Blue and yellow. Green. Blue and yellow look good on me. Blue, yeah, blue it's and yellow. So bright and sunshiny. <laughs> yeah. I could never feel down in I know. You always have to be happy. Right? Yeah, but I wouldn't feel stoked being in group eh. Group eh. Group eh. <laughs> <laughs> be better than me. Group eh. 
<laughs> Could you imagine though if it was like group A but they switched and they put like Germany into group A and Poland into group B so it was like be like determined. Yeah. Like they could have you know they kind of did that. It could be though. worse. It could be it worse. It could be though. worse. Well, it could have been just like okay, we're going to put Germany in group A. We're going to put Italy in group D. And we're going <laughs> to yeah. put keep Netherlands in group B and you have your four teams yeah, right it, there and it could have been so much worse. So at least there's a little bit of competition. Yeah, you know, we get to watch just quite a few the group stage. games. No, but I'm excited for stuff after the group stage. I just, I, I want it now. <laughs> yeah, make it happen. Make it happen. The group stage is exciting, but then past that, it's like, then, then it gets it's intense, intense then it's like and it's like, yeah, because, yeah, because then it really is like death. Because yeah. you know, the group stage, you know, it's set up like the World Cup, so you do the two games, and then, you know, you yeah. your scores, you play each other, so like, yeah. On. Yeah. Everybody plays each other, and then, and then you get to the, you know, so then it's like a standoff. Season. Then it's like, yeah. I play you. All right. But it's like, <laughs> you and me, the lights dim. Yeah, the, the music the turns music up. The music starts. Yeah, we're gonna we're we're in the process of making our own um, Euro movie. Yeah. So, um, now we're we're talking about the soundtrack. You're, you're so hearing the beginning. The makings of, of our of fine. our. <laughs> it's gonna have a lot of Kanye West and. <laughs> Kanye in One Direction. Kanye in One Direction. Yeah, just those two. Just <laughs> those two. Together. Nobody else. Nobody just, else. I don't know. Justin Bieber can make it like an appearance slightly in there towards the end. Like, never say never. Okay? Yeah. Okay. They'll okay. run out on you. They'll run out to the field. Of, the Ukraine yeah, the Ukraine. Ukraine. It'll be the Ukraine's backtrack. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Done. All right. So, so look for that soon. Uh, in stores soon. <laughs> Theaters. We're not a straight to DVD. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is not a straight to DVD Euro. This is gonna be exciting. World premieres next month. It's I think, fine. I think Germany's gonna get there fourth. I think. Well, fingers crossed because we all want Germany. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we're gonna look like idiots not, if they don't. There might be a podcast with like mascara and yeah, tears, yeah, we want, like, sobbing. We want, like, we'll, we'll, live, yeah. we'll live stream it. And then you can <laughs> see all the mascara like going down our faces. Yeah, we'll like twit cam it just crying. <laughs> no speaking. Yeah, no. Just One Direction just and Kanye sob. soundtrack playing <laughs> One in the One Direction and Kanye playing while we sob at the same time. They're playing at the same time. <laughs> it could work. It'd be a cool mashup. It could. Yeah. I'm sure we could get someone to mix it real well. Yeah, it's fine. Justin anyway. Bieber can mix it. It's fine. That, Wait, that's where my that's, boyfriend. That's where the Biebs comes in. He'll oh. he'll mix Kanye in One Direction for us. And on that note, I think Fourth <laughs> Friday is coming to a close. <laughs> yes. Um. So thank you guys for listening to us in the special edition of um, Girls in Goal. Um. It'll be, you know, it'll we'll we'll have it. Every so often. Sporadically. Sporadically. When it's important. So, um, with that, thanks Haley for joining us and Yay. for and you'll see more of Haley um during all of our foreign Fridays. Yes. So, um join us next week for our regularly yes, scheduled on Tuesday. Girls in Gold. So, um, we'll see you guys soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> that got ridiculous at the I end know, towards the end. <laughs> Justin Bieber! <laughs> Kanye and Kanye and One Direction into <laughs>